Have you ever uh, got a postcard where the picture was just so beautiful you were mesmerized? And hopefully that'll come up. <laughs> there. Or maybe you just got a postcard where the picture is uh, something that says, I wish I was there. Now, by the way, if you're looking at these and you say, I wish I'd have made them bigger, these are postcards. Okay. So a little smaller. Or maybe you got a postcard that you, when you look at it, you just don't think it's real and it doesn't exist. By the way, the first one was Denali, the second one was Diamond Head in Hawaii, and this is Victoria Falls. Or maybe you just get a postcard and you want to blow it up and hang it on the wall. And then there's the postcard where you really don't care what the picture is. It doesn't matter what's on the front of the postcard. It's what's on the rear of the postcard. <laughs> it may be short and sweet, but it just touches your heart and it's just something you want to put into a scrapbook and keep forever. Well, this morning, I'm going to look at another little postcard, a postcard that Paul sent. We call it a postcard because it's a very small book. It's called Philemon. When Pastor Steve started his series on, on little known people in the Bible, this immediately said, this would be one that he ought to do is Philemon. And uh, when, then when he asked me to preach on Sunday morning, I says, I'm going to do Philemon. And he says, good. I've never heard a sermon on Philemon before. This is a book almost everyone has maybe heard of, but they've never really looked at. They've never really opened up to it. I mean, here's my Bible here, and there is Philemon. Okay? Very short. We'll talk about that too. When I was at camp last week with our Trail Life troop and 30 other young men in Trail Life and 20 adults, one of the uh, morning devotionals, I gave this to the boys. I talked about Philemon. So a week ago, this was sort of my dress rehearsal for today. So now I've done it twice. Here are some facts about Philemon. Number one, it was written by Paul in about 60 AD, at the same time he wrote the book of Colossians. It's the third shortest book of the Bible. Third John and Second John are the shortest. It's the only book that Paul wrote that is one chapter. It is one of four prison epistles, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon. It is one of only four books to be written to a single person, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. And Philemon has a little bit of controversy about it, which you will take a look at as we go through it. So, if this is a personal letter to, a, to one person... Who is Philemon? First, he lives in Colossae. So when Paul was writing the book to the Colossians, he must have thought about Philemon. This wrote about the same time. He was a friend of Paul and a fellow Christian. And we can see when we look at the book, he was very good friends with Philemon. And good friends with his family. He knows his family. He knows what Philemon's doing. He's probably spent some time with him, especially when he was there. So very good friends. Philemon has a house church, which is not unusual because in that time there really were no churches. There were temples and synagogues, but there were no churches. So most of the churches for the new Christian faith was house churches. His wife, the first name that comes up was Aphia. And probably his son was Archippus, which he names in the book. And when we look at verse 16, we will find out that Philemon was a slave owner. Who is Onesimus, who is the central character of this book? 
He is a runaway slave and a thief. He ran away from Philemon. He stole from Philemon when he left. He left Coloss, uh, he left Philemon's house, and he found Paul in Rome. And there, under his discipleship, he became a Christian. And we will find out when we read the book, Onesimus was very useful to Paul. Matter of fact, that's what his name means, is useful. Which Paul is going to use in the book a couple of times to talk about him. So now let's look a little deeper. But first off, I think what we ought to do is let's read the book. If everybody would turn to Philemon, it's in the New Testament, just before Hebrews and right after Titus. You can look at it up here, you can turn in your Bible, you can go to your app. So many ways to, to look at this. And I will read it as you follow along. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith so that you will have a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the saints. Therefore, Although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. I then, as Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention to you that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ, confident of your obedience. I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I asked. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Jesus Christ, send your greetings, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Now let's look at this and dig a little deeper. First, this book is this is a book in the Bible that's named after a slave owner. The slave has escaped and stolen from his master. Paul is returning the slave to his master. Now here the enemy digs his heels in and uses this against 
Christians. Christians must condone slavery, or why would we have a book named after a slave owner? And would, would, why would Paul, a Christian, return the slave to his owner? Why? First, those two little things are taken out of context with this book. We must read the whole book to find out what is really going on. And second, we must know about slaves and slavery, especially during this time in history. And we're going to look at the thing with slaves first. Paul is in Rome. It's a city that has over 600,000 slaves. 30% of the population of Rome. There are different types of slaves, but slaves nevertheless. If you look up here, you'll see a whole list of slaves, different kinds of slaves, and what can happen to them. Some slaves were captured from the conquest of the Roman Empire. And some of those men in the army that captured the other countries were slaves themselves. Some people sold themselves into slavery so they could survive or just to pay a debt. They actually sold themselves into slavery, which actually we should all be familiar with. If we've all owned a home, we took out a loan in the bank and we became for a while a slave to that bank. We had to pay the debt. We had to have insurance on the house. We had to keep it up. So in just a small way, we were a slave in debt to the bank. Some people sold their sons and daughters into slavery so they could survive or pay a debt. So here's a dad that he has no job, no place to find a job, his family's starving. And so he sells his son and daughter so that they have a place to stay, food, and clothing. It may sound harsh, but he's also been looking after his family. Some slaves could buy themselves out of slavery. Either they or their family would gather up enough money to get them out of slavery. So some slaves were paid. Matter of fact, some of the slaves in the Roman Empire owned land and property. So a lot of different ways of slavery going on. Now what Onesimus was, we're not sure. But he was a slave. And there were laws about slavery. There were laws about how slaves could be treated. But the masters in most cases had the power of life and death over the slaves. There were laws that you could not harbor a slave under penalty of death. In other words, if a slave came to your door and asked for sanctuary, and you took him in, and they found him there, not only the slave could be executed, but you could be executed also. But at the same time, if you caught a runaway slave, you should return him to his master, or you could actually sell the slave, but the money should go back to the master. People were hired to find escaped slaves. They were sort of like bounty hunters. So here's Onesimus, a slave of Philemon. Not only does he escape, but he steals from his master, which is also a capital offense, can be punishable by death. So he sort of got two death sentences hanging over him. Paul is a very close friend of Philemon. He's probably stayed with him, he knows his family, he knows what's going on. So if Philemon, if Onesimus is in the same house, he's got to know Paul too. He's seen him as Paul stayed with him, he knows about him. Onesimus escapes and he goes to Rome and he finds Paul. Paul takes him under his wing and he becomes a Christian. Coincidence? Did just, Onesimus just happen to go to Rome? 
just happened to find Paul, who was a good friend of Philemon? Well, I think we know with God there are no coincidences. There are none. Paul can now be arrested for harboring a slave. He's under house arrest now. Under penalty of possibly of death. And now this is going to be right on top of his head. So he sends him back. But. It's a very big but here. He sends him back. I want to tell you that slavery is wrong. It is wrong in God's eye. It is just plain wrong. So let's look at some facts about slavery. Slavery came about about as a result of the fall of man. This was not something ordained by God. He didn't say there's going to be slaves. God created all of us in his image. In Exodus 21, 16, it says this, He who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him or is found in his possession, shall surely be put to death. Galatians 3, 28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Ephesians 6, 8 says, Knowing that whatever good thing each one does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether slave or free. Ephesians 6, 9, And masters do the same things to them and give up threatening, knowing that both their master and yours is in heaven, and there's no partiality in him. And Colossians 3.11 says, A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and freeman, but Christ is all and in all. So here's Paul. He's writing this book to the Colossians. He puts that in there. You think when he wrote that, all of a sudden he goes, Philemon, I need to write a letter to Philemon. Or maybe he already was writing the letter for him and says, now I've got to tell the rest of the Colossians. But anyway, there are no coincidences with God. So that's about slavery. Paul could be put to death. Onesimus could be put to death. But now let's go back to the content of the book. Paul, in his postcard, is appealing to a a fellow brother in Christ all through these verses to take Onesimus back. He says he is useful to Paul and he can be useful to Philemon, not as a slave, but as a brother. There again, he's using that useful. Onesimus means useful. He can be useful to me and he can be useful to you as a brother. Paul could have ordered this as an impossible. He could have said, no, you've got to give him his freedom. But he doesn't. He even says Philemon owes him, but he, Paul, will pay Philemon back. He even offers to repay whatever was wronged to Philemon by Onesimus. And he even says that maybe he was separated from Philemon, so that he could become a part of God's family. Maybe the reason he ran away is God's in charge of this is so he could become a part of God's family. So if Philemon does free one slave because of Christ, then if there are other slaves, they need to know Christ also. This is not a slavery message. This is an anti-slavery message. So no matter how the enemy uses it, we know what's true. 
and why God put it here. I also find it very interesting in this book, this little postcard that we have find little snippets of the gospel message all throughout it. We were a slave to sin. And we were constantly, and we are constantly, running away from it. Just like Adam and Eve hid in the garden, we are trying to hide our sin constantly from God. We are constantly running away from what the truth is. We are a slave to sin, and Christ set us free. Onesimus was a slave and through Christ should be set free. Our penalty for sin is severe. Death. But Christ took our debt of sin and he took it all upon him. said, all their sin, put it on me. And Paul offers to take the debt of Onesimus on him. God accepts us back. And he adopts us into his family. Paul is asking Philemon to accept Onesimus back and bring him into the family of Christ. And then Paul asked Philemon to prepare a room for him just as Christ has prepared a room for us. Little subtle hints that Philemon probably knows about and Paul puts it in here to help convince him. So, what happened? He sends Paul, he sends Onesimus back. Sends him back with Epaphras. But it doesn't say what happened. It doesn't tell us here, but if we take and we look at history, we find a few interesting little facts. About 30 years later, after this this little postcard was written, 30 years later, Ignatius of Antioch makes a man called Onesimus the bishop of Ephesus. And we're not sure if it's the same Onesimus, but the timing is right. And if it's true, then the slave became a brother who became a bishop. And also through history, we know that someone named Onesimus, because of his beliefs in Christ, was beheaded by the Romans. And so some of the religious religions in the world today consider Onesimus a saint. The same one or a different one? We don't know, but I think uh, why would God put this here except to let us know? This little bitty book, it's a little bitty postcard. We skip over it sometimes. Matter of fact, it's not that we skip over it, we just turn the page too quick and we're already into Hebrews. It has a lot of information in it, but think about the little bitty postcard and how much information it has in here. Maybe a little more that says, I'm at camp, I'm having a good time, I miss you and I love you. but it's still a book about love. A little postcard of love. 
Our takeaways. What can we take away with it from this? Forgiveness and reconciliation are highlighted in this book. Paul is asking Philemon to forgive a slave that ran away and stole from him. And I think he's also even asking forgiveness for him, for Paul. And he sends him back so there can be a reconciliation so that Philemon who has his own house church and is preaching the gospel will reconcile with his slave. Not as a slave, but as a brother. So it's a book of forgiveness and reconciliation. We can also take away from this, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter what you are or who you are or the color of your skin or your race or your status, male or female, free or slave, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And there's a beautiful difference in this book. It shows the beautiful difference between law and grace. As Jesus pointed out so many times, what was the law? And what is grace? By law, Fleeman could punish a runaway slave. Death. But through the Lord Jesus, master and slave, could fellowship and love on an equal basis. Through Christ, God is trying to bring us all together in Christ. Through Christ, the only way. This little bitty postcard has a lot of stuff in it. Why did God put it there? Well, I hope we have a little better idea now. And by the way, while you're at it, you may want to take a look at some of those other little postcards. They're short too, but they're really full of a lot of good theology and good meaning. How should we live our lives? What should we do?